I'm Atuba George and I'm so blessed today to be bringing God's truth to you. Now, this is a new week and the Lord has his word for you. Remember I told you how God expresses his love to you is by giving you his word. And how you express your love to God is by keeping his word. Praise God. So he gives his word, you keep his word. What do you have? You have a love affair, praise God. So if he gives his word and you don't keep it, then something is wrong. And you cannot keep what you don't have or you have not been given. You you understand, right? Praise God. But before we go into today's broadcast, I've got really, really important things to share with you today. But before we go into today's broadcast, can we make demand for our daily bread, just like the Lord commanded us to do? Are you ready? Join me in faith right now. Say, Father... I declare and I demand for my daily bread. It is coming to me now. Because Jesus said so, and I believe it. It is done. And I receive it today. In Jesus' name, amen. Everything that is connected to your daily bread. I told you this is not just food. Every provision you require to function right today. Receive it right now. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Angels are ministering to your needs. Right now. Receive the ministration of angels. In Jesus name. Amen. Praise God. All right then. We are still talking about believing in jesus what it means to believe in jesus and our text is from mark mark gospel chapter 16 and from verse 17 mark gospel 16 now this was this was one of the last instructions jesus gave to his disciples before he ascended so now he, from verse, if you can, you can start reading from verse 16 when he gave them the, the command, go into all the world. Now, here's the instruction part. He said, and these signs shall follow them that believe. Take note of the word shall, shall, shall. It's a very strong word. He said, and these signs shall follow them, meaning this must happen. These signs, he's going to talk about, you must see it in a believer's life. Okay, so now he says, in my name shall they cast out devils. He used the word shall, meaning every believer must cast out devils. Every believer. You see, when when you buy an electronic set, for example, and then you you have the manual. The manual will tell you everything this machine or this, this electronic can do. Now, it has been manufactured to do that. See? Now, there are certain functions that are connected to the day-to-day working of the, uh, the, the electronic or the set. And then there are some other functions that are used for effects. Now, for those who want to go that far to have that effect or those that want to use that thing for some professional reasons, they use it differently from the one who's using it normally you understand what i'm talking about but then the manual tells you what exactly this thing can do now in this case jesus is not just telling us what we can do this jesus is telling us what we will do now take note of those things so now when he says in my name they shall cast out devils remember i said look This is an instruction Jesus was giving to his disciples concerning those that will believe as they go to preach. So imagine Jesus telling you, his disciple, this. And then he's telling you, go preach. And anyone who believes and is baptized um, shall be saved. And the one who doesn't believe shall be damned. Now you're wondering, so how do I know who's saved? How do I know who's damned? Okay. And then he, he goes further to say, now these signs shall follow them that believe. Aha, uh-huh. that's where you get interested. You want to know that part. Okay, so how do I know those who believe? You will see this sign. So it says, in my name, they shall cast out devils. Now, what does that tell you? There must be a need in your life 
to cast out devils. Now, don't, you see, there is this um, problem people have where the scriptures is concerned. Number one, they, they think, oh, it's English, but this thing was not written or spoken in English. So maybe the translators just put, see, when these men, when they were translating this thing into English, they, they were not just regular people. They took their time to examine every word. See, they took their time to examine every word. And at the strength of the word, remember I was telling you last week about language and culture, where interpretation is concerned. So in interpreting it, they know how strong a word is. So they look for a strong English word to use in that case. See, so now when they use this word, in my name they shall now look at something in my name shall they cast out devils now he next he says they shall speak with new tongues they shall take up serpents and if they drink now take notes now he now says, and if they drink any deadly thing it shall not hurt them now he didn't say they shall drink any deadly thing see he says they shall Cast out devils, they shall speak with tongues, they shall take up serpents. Then he now says, and if they drink any deadly thing, it shall. See that now? Now, the thing they drink, if they drink. So this is conditional. So he didn't say, go look for something to drink to prove you're a believer. But if you drink, now you as the one who preached to them, who's watching whether they're, they're believers or not. He said, ah, I just drank something poisonous. You just drank something poisonous. Okay. It's not supposed to hurt you. It's not supposed to hurt me. Yeah. Because now you're, you're thinking, does he believe in Jesus Christ? Jesus said, it shall not. He said, it may not hurt. It shall not hurt them. Now, watch this. Term. They shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. Brothers and sisters, you see, we have played down on these things enough. But you see, as we approach the last days, the Lord is bringing us back to the original. The Lord is bringing us back to the essence of the, the, the reason Jesus came and died. And if we don't take these things seriously, then we are not part of those who Jesus is coming back for. He's coming back for a church without spots, wrinkles, or any such things. But you see, it's not just about trying to keep the church clean. It's first and foremost, and, and truly speaking, this is what will keep the church clean. You see, I'll tell you one truth. A believer who's conscious in fulfilling the things that Jesus has said will not easily enjoy engaging in the wrong things. It's as simple as that. It's not about, oh, remain rapturable or try to try to be pure, try to be holy. Oh, pray so much so that you'll be pure. Brothers and sisters, when you engage in the things and, and when you're a follower of Jesus Christ, I mean, you follow him. The life of following Jesus alone is so demanding that you will not sincerely have the the allow me to use the word you will not sincerely have the capacity to continuously doing evil or nonsense you won't because even if you want to the fact that you have made up your mind to be a follower of jesus christ it's so demanding and engaging i tell people this you know no man walking by faith can be lazy the life of faith is is engaging and so occupied it will occupy the whole of your being you wake up in the morning you're looking for the word of the lord that's what you, that's what it means to walk by faith you are looking for god's word you are searching it out oh, has god said anything today oh he's not told me about this thing oh I'm, I'm expecting god to speak to me concerning this that's what it means to live by faith it's not a lazy life and uh, uh, he says living by faith all these people they're just lazy they say they're living by faith no any man who's truly living by faith cannot be lazy and the truth is he might not act when you think he should act but there's something he's waiting for the moment he receives that thing he begins to run with it praise god so he says in my name they shall cast out 
devils. Now we are dwelling on the first one first. No, that's what we're, we're looking at. And I was telling you last week that there's a reason that's the first thing Jesus said will be the sign of a believer to cast out devil. There's a reason. And this thing started right from the Garden of Eden. If you remember, when the Lord told the woman, says the seed of the woman will bruise the head of the serpent and the serpent will bruise his heel. Now, I'll explain that in the course of this broadcast. I will explain what it means for the seed of the uh, for the serpent to bruise the heel of the seed of the serpent. Now take no but the seed of the woman, excuse me. But then he said the seed of the woman will bruise the head of the serpent. You see, now Satan knows that this judgment has already been passed. Passed. So if and he knows God is true, God will not change from what he has said. As long as that thing has come out of the mouth of God, God's not going to change it. So Satan knows that there is nothing he can do to make God change his mind concerning that judgment that has been given. And knowing this, you know, Satan himself is a schemer. That's one thing you must know about him. Knowing this, he knew that the only way to shift or to stop this judgment from coming to pass is when God in the day of that judgment will not find the seed of the woman that will bruise his head. Yep. So Satan, knowing this, he went into his main objective of lying and deceiving. So you read in scriptures, Genesis chapter 6, and the Bible spoke about how um, some sons of God saw the daughters of men and all oh, these men, these women were be are beautiful. And then they, they, they came in and they began to marry them and not just marry them. In fact, the Bible said they took wives as they chose. They decided they just, whether married or married, they just take your wife and take any lady they find. And they began, they took them as wives. So there was so much oppression. Why? Because this, this, this beings, these sons of God, now in truth, these are angelic beings that watch over the earth. So they are called watchers. So they watch over the earth. They watch over the activities of men. And in watching the activities of men, they were deceived to think that, hey, let's try out this thing. In defiance to their nature, in defiance to their calling. Let's try out this thing. You know, some people think angels don't have minds of their own. They think angels are re 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 um, robots. That just go in the direction God wants them to go. No, angels have minds of their own. They willingly obey God. They willingly serve God. That's why the angels that don't give their will to the service of God or the purpose for which God sent them out, they will be judged. See, so they are judged because they disobeyed. Understand this. Praise God. Now then, so these angels who are also called watchers saw the beautiful women and they were deceived to think that they can actually behave like humans and they fell for that deception and they began to take wives and you know how this thing works it only takes one to start and soon they began to produce giants and beings that were not supposed to now some someone said, how, how is that even possible oh yes there are situations that angelic beings have shown up on earth and when and each time an angel shows up on earth they show up as men they show up like normal human beings. you will pass them and you will not know that these are angels you will know you see the only way we get to know is by the spirit of god that is in us and even that sometimes we don't even know immediately most times it's after the, the event that we even realize that, oh, hold on, that must have been an angel. You see that? Now, while they, now I've, I've had that experience before when, I think I've said it on this broadcast before, and an angel actually came to pick me. I mean, pick me with a car that does not exist. <laughs> you know, it's, the, you know, I think of this thing sometimes, and I wonder that there's so much possibilities that we have that we have not um, 
we have not explored as God's children. We have not explored so much possibilities. You know, every time I think of that experience, this was several years ago. I mean, I was stranded and then a car shows up and I didn't, I didn't flag down the car. The car drove straight to me and asked, to, he didn't even ask me. He, you know, he, he asked it in form of a question, but he actually mentioned exactly where I was going. I said, yes, that's where I'm going. He said, okay, come in. And that was it. It was not a taxi looking for other passengers. He picked me and we took off on the express and got to my location and he dropped me. Now, while I was on inside that car, a lot of things were going through my mind. I knew this was not normal. I knew this was, um, you know, you know how a lot of things were going through my mind, but for some reason, I couldn't speak out. Not because I felt gagged, you know, like, I, no, I was free. I was normal. But it was after I dropped, I started telling myself, why didn't I ask him all those questions that I was thinking? <laughs> it's God. You know, I was just like, but, but really, why didn't I ask him? I knew it was an angel. I knew while I was sitting in that car. So how the angel showed up as a human being, number two, came with a car that I never saw again. Of course, the angel will not go and steal somebody's car. Now, that's an amazing thing. Now, several people have had experiences like this. See? Now, in, at that point, when angels appear like that, now, because I needed a car, and, you know, maybe if it's today, God could have sent a Tesla car. You, you understand what I'm saying? I mean, a car would just stop in front of me, and the door will open, and I look inside, oh, I understand. There are cars without uh, drivers these days and i sit down and then the car takes me to where i'm going to but for 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 so someone to drive that car it has to be the angel had to show up in human form now imagine if we were driving for a very long distance maybe for certain hours now that angel will definitely get hungry because he's in human form and because the angel is hungry, the angel will have to eat. If that angel stays long enough. So what I'm saying is angels, when they show up on earth, they, they act, when they take on the human body, they actually feel everything human beings feel. See that now? Now that's why most times they don't stay so long in such activities. They finish and they disappear. They just go. Now, but these ones stayed back and said they wanted to do what humans do. So they began to have sex with the women. And you know what that means. They began to produce beings that are not supposed to be on the earth. What do you mean they are not supposed to be on the earth? Because God did not plan for such reproduction to happen. And when they began to produce those beings, this is where evil spirits came from. Say, so how do you mean evil spirits came from them? Yes, because when they began, when these beings began to die. Now, of course, you know, even till the days when God judged the earth with a flood. This was actually the reason, the main reason God had to destroy all the earths that he created because of these beings, because they were so, the earth was, they were multiplying on the earth. Actually getting to the point where they began to outnumber the real human beings that are on the earth. Now, because these are beings that are a product of angels that are spiritual beings, and humans that are living souls, their children were actually spirit beings. So they die, and when they die, there is no resting place created for them. And because there is no resting place created for them, these beings start roaming the earth, looking for dwelling places. And because they were, they came forth as human beings, the only dwelling places these spirits have known is the human body my time is up for today but listen we are just entering this 
And you need to understand this. You need to understand why it's important for you to cast out devils. I'm giving you the background so that when we begin to flow in this, you will know why Jesus said you shall cast out devils. I bless you today with the anointing of God's spirit. And in the name of the Lord Jesus, you have been given the authority to function in the stead of Jesus on the earth. And I pray that the spirit of boldness will rest upon you right now. And you begin to do the things that Jesus expects of you in the name of the Lord Jesus. And I bless your day today. Be empowered to receive everything God has planned for you. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. God bless you. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye.